One of the things you kind of described that you already spoke to, you call it the great perceptual filter. Yeah. So there's the the famous great filter, which is basically the idea that there's some really powerful moment in every intelligent civilization that where they destroy themselves. Yeah. That explains why we have not seen aliens. And you're saying that there's something like that in the temporal history of the creation of complex objects that at a certain point, they become an island, an island too far to reach based on the perceptions. I hope not, but yeah, I worry about it, yeah. But that's basically meaning there's something fundamental about the universe where if the more complex you become, the the harder it will be to perceive other complex. Yeah, creatures. I mean, just think about us with microbial life, right? Like we used to once be cells, and for most of human history, we didn't even recognize cellular life was there until we built a new technology, microscopes that allowed us to see them. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of it's kind of weird, right? Like like things and that they're we, close to us. They're close. They're everywhere. But also in the history of the development of complex objects, they're pretty close. Yes, yeah, super close. Super yeah. close. Like, yeah, I mean, all, everything on this planet is like, <laughs> it's yeah. like pretty much the same thing. Like, like the space of possibilities is so huge. It's like, we're virtually identical. So how many flavors or kinds of life do you think are possible? <laughs> I'm like trying to imagine all the little flickering lights in the universe, like in the way that you were describing it. That was kind of cool. It was so, I mean, it was awesome <laughs> to me. It was exactly that. It was like lights. Yeah. The way, the way you maybe see a city, but a yeah. city... From like up above, you see a city with the flickering lights, but there's a coldness to the city. Yeah. Uh, there's some, you know that, you know, humans are capable of good and evil and you could see like there's a complex feeling to the city. I had no such complex feeling about cool. seeing the lights of uh, all the galaxies, whatever, the billions of galaxies. Yeah, this is kind of cool. I'll answer the question in a second, but it's just maybe like this idea of flickering lights and intelligence is interesting to me because I, you know, like we have such a human-centric view of alien intelligences that a lot of the work that I've been doing with my lab is just trying to take inspiration from uh, non-human life on Earth. And so I have this really talented undergrad student that's basically building a model of, alien communication based on fireflies. So nice. one of my colleagues, Orit Peleg, is, she's totally brilliant, but she she goes out with like GoPro cameras and like, you know, films in high resolution, all these firefly flickering. And she has like this theory about how their signaling evolved to like maximally differentiate um, the flickering pattern. So like she has a theory basically that predicts, you know, like this species should flash like this. If this one's flashing like this, this other one's going to do it at a slower rate so that the, you know, like they can distinguish each other living in the same environment. And so this undergrad's building this model where you have like a pulsar background of all these like giant flashing sources in the universe and an alien intelligence, you know, wants to signal it's there. So it's flashing like a firefly. Uh, <laughs> and I just like, I like the idea of thinking about non-human aliens. So that was really fun. The mechanism of the flashing, unfortunately, is like the diversity of that is very high and we might not be able to see it. That's what. Yeah. Well, I think there's some ways we might be able to differentiate that signal. I'm still thinking about this part of it. So one is like, like if you have pulsars and they all have a certain spectrum to their pulsing patterns and you have this one signal that's in there that's basically tried to maximally differentiate itself from all the other sources in the universe, it might stick out in the distribution. Like there might be ways of actually being able to tell if it's it's an anomalous pulsar basically. Um, but I don't know if that would really work or not. So still thinking about it. 